In this uptime year review, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this app. If you have any questions, please comment them below, and I'll also leave a discounted link so you can always get your money's worth for Uptime Year. Uptime Year allows you to monitor your website's uptime, speed, and health to improve site performance. Upon logging in, you come over here to the home page. Now, before you would have come over to here, you will have linked whichever website you want to monitor the speed for. We have an array of monitors here. We've got our average availability, which is at 100%, active incidents, which is at zero, paused, zero, total monitors, three, healthy monitors, three, and under maintenance, zero. Here we've got our speed, our SSL, and our HTTPS. So as you can see there, speed, 2.42 seconds, 100% on average availability, and then zero seconds, 39 seconds on SSL, 100%, zero seconds, and then for this one, zero, 100% and zero. Now, obviously, the more of these results you've got, you could search in the search bar. You could also filter them by status, so you could choose from all, up, down, maintenance, or paused, as well as the monitoring type, all, uptime, speed, transaction, real user, an SSL, or you could select a monitoring group. We don't have any here, but if you created any, they would show here. You can also select the view, so it could be a table view, so it's set out like this, a box view, which is already on, or a graph view as well. Now, there's also options for each one as well. If we click on the three dots, we've got the option to edit monitor, pause monitor, schedule maintenance, or delete monitor. So if I went on edit monitor, then this leads us over to this page on the monitoring section, which I'm going to get to in just a moment. So under overview, we also have active incidents. So you can select all the monitors. So uptime monitoring, SSL, transaction, speed, real user. You could just select some of them and choose which ones you want to look for. And then any active incidents will display here. Below active incidents is incident log. Again, we don't have any incidents, so there's nothing to show here. However, we could select our monitors and we could also set the date. So you could check for incidents between, say, the 6th and the 27th and apply that. And if you had a lot of different incidents, then you could also select the show per page. So 10, 20, 50 or 100. We also have monitoring log. So here we can select the status up or down our monitors and our locations. So this is just for today in the last hour. And as we can see, we've got quite a few results. We've got SSL monitoring from Sapporo, Japan. Uptime monitoring from Mexico City. It says the times, so that was one minute ago. Status and the duration. So that was 0 0.05 seconds. Again, we can set the date. Again, you could set a custom range, or you could do just today, yesterday, last seven days last 30 days, this month, or last month. Below dashboard, we also have monitoring. So we've first got uptime monitoring. Now you can search by name for up or down. Here we have a summary, which has got our availability and the average response time in milliseconds. We've got our timeline. So this is September the 6th to 27th. Green is uptime, red is downtime, blue is maintenance, and gray is unknown. Incident logs, again, we don't have any, and our monitoring log. You can also click on show full list. That will give you a full list of the monitoring log. Now, if you wanted to add a new uptime monitor, we could go on add new monitor. You can choose your type. So you can choose from web, network, or email. And we have different results depending if you wanted an SSL monitor, a speed monitor, a real user monitor, or a transaction monitor. You can enter the website name there, your website URL, or you could also add bulk. We can check if a specific content is on your website. So you could enter a keyword into there and check for it. And you can also send custom headers. Again, you could enter a key and the value. We have notification settings where it could notify after five minutes when a problem occurs or check problems every five minutes and then notify why not? We also have alerting, so you could choose your team members that will be alerted. At the moment, it's just me. I'm a single team member, 
but we could add a contact by adding their name, their email and their contact value and clicking on add new contact. Next domain we also have advanced where we can set the timeout time. So timeout after 30 seconds, after 50 seconds, etc. Our error types to be reported, our rejected HTTP response types and our follow redirects. Next to advanced we also have group. Here we could set a group name. So earlier you might have noticed it asked for a group. We didn't have one. We could set one here. So I could call it group one, create group. You can also set the color. You can edit or delete that. We also have locations and this has got probe locations options where we can tick or untick use all monitoring probes, which is recommended. If we go back on uptime monitoring, we can see our new monitor shows up there. Below uptime monitoring, we have SSL monitoring. Here we've got our status, which is valid, or valid from, which is August 26. Days remaining, or valid to, the issuer, the protocol, and the domain, as well as the timeline, which has green for uptime, yellow for trouble, red for downtime, blue for maintenance, and gray for unknown. Ours is currently unknown. We then have the incidence log and the monitoring log. Below there we have speed monitoring, which has a summary with the average load time, your domain in seconds, third party, dead elements, average requests, and number of hosts. We've got a small graph there below. We also have the monitoring log. We then have timeline, incidents overview, and again, the monitoring log. Below there is real user monitoring. Now we don't have anything here at the moment, but to create a real user monitor, we could click on there, select real user monitoring, put the website name, the website URL, set outage alerting, performance alerting, drop in traffic alerting, JavaScript errors alerting, visitor satisfaction settings, and then set our team members. Below there, we have transaction monitoring. Again, we don't have anything here, but we could create one. Gain setting the website name, Set the transaction instructions by adding steps, notification settings, and alerting. Below monitoring is reporting. So we first got my contacts. So again, we've only got myself, but I could add a new contact into here. We could also set alerting days. So we've got do not alert on the following days. We could select Wednesdays if we didn't want alerts then, Wednesdays and Fridays. Or you could also set it to only alert during specific hours and update the settings there. Below there we have users where again we could add a new user. We have teams. We don't have any teams at the moment but we could click on create new team, set our team name, add the members and set the alerting settings. We also have integrations so we could integrate webhooks, WhatsApp, Slack, webhooks again, Microsoft Teams, Pager Duty status page, Discord, Telegram, Mattermost, or Twilio. Below there we have public status pages. We've nothing here, but if we click on create new public status page, we can set the name, we can allow it to show incidents history, show current incidents, show schedule and maintenance, or disable the uTime your link in the footer. You can add your URL name and a custom domain. You also have the option to select the monitors, or you could obviously go and select all monitors. You can select the branding or only add a logo where you could upload a logo. You can also set a custom code snippet. Below there we have scheduled reports. As we can see, we've got our daily reports, weekly reports, monthly reports, and yearly reports. Now we could create a new report, set the report name, choose when you want it to be. So we could do a quarterly report, choose to show all incidents, show all maintenance windows, Attach PDF report, HTML report, or CSV report. Set the monitors, branding, and choose who you want the email to go out to. Below custom report, we have branding, game. We don't have a theme here, but we could go and create new theme. Set our theme name, choose a logo, and then we can customize the email theme editing. So we could choose the background color. So we could go for red, the content area, we could go black, date text color, table title color, table header background color, table header text color, table cell background color, normal text color, negative text color, positive text color, and footer text color. And then once you're happy there, 
you go ahead and click on create. Below there, we have our settings, which is just our general account settings and our subscription management. And that's just about everything. So what did I think of Uptimia? Uptimia gave an array of information regarding a site's speed, health, and uptime. It was really easy to monitor different incidents, and I also really like how you could schedule all your reports. Overall, I would definitely recommend Uptimia. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.